Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of the Matchstick mini series. And in this episode, we will go over how um, to use a bunch of handler functions that Matchstick provides out of the box in order to make your life with unit tests uh, easier. So uh, it's a lot that I want to cover, so I will just dive straight into it. Now, the first thing that I want to show you is there is a method called log store that we can import from matchstick.js. We're going to import a lot of things from here, log store, which is basically a uh, debug helper method. So over here, if we want to see what happens in our store after we've um, after we've ran a handler, we can say um, log store, uh, and and there it is, and that will just that will just dump our um, that will just dump our store to the console. Uh, but we shouldn't have deleted this one. Sorry. So after our handler function, we say log store. Uh, let me just run yarn test. There we go. And then we can see a pretty printed JSON of everything that's inside of the store at the moment, which is really useful for debugging. Now, the second thing I want to show you is the not in store method. Uh, it actually comes with the assert namespace. Um, maybe we want to test that uh, a given entity is not in the store. For, for some reason, I actually know people that, um, subgrad developers that really requested this feature. So we can say, assert not in store um, and we, we can so we can say that a gravatar with um, with an ID of just all zeros does not exist in the store. Um, let's actually let's run this and we would expect our tests to pass because a entity with that type and ID does not exist. Now, uh, let me just remove this so it doesn't clog things up. Uh, but if we say, for instance, that we want uh, an entity with an ID with, with, with this ID to not exist, obviously that's going to be false. But let's just wait and, and, and see how it goes. Uh, there we go, value for entity was found in the store. Now, this is a pretty nice segue for our next helper method. Um, so as you can see, we can we can just go ahead and write another test here. Uh, this test should fail. We will do our callback and we will say, uh, we will just, we will say this thing in here. Um, let me just copy over these things. And now we know that this fails, right? And what if we expect that to fail? Well, we will say, we will just go ahead and, and here and we will say true. See, uh, my ID just gives a hint that this is the should fail uh, field. So let's just run this. Um, okay, and we can actually see that both of our tests passed. Now, we are still getting this error log, which is going to be fixed in one of our newest versions, but What's important is the test actually passed because it failed, because we've marked it with a should fail. All right, so next thing is uh, basically using logs. So I'm just going to remove all of this. Uh, and I will say, oh, no, sorry. I'm just going to create a new test. Uh, I will say test logging. And I will say, oh, sorry. I will import the log function from match the KS. And then I'll just go ahead and paste, oh no, I'm just gonna go ahead and write some things like we can have log success, uh, which is something like success, which is gonna be a green message for, for some reason, people people might might want that. Um, oh yeah, we also need to give it, uh, we can give it uh, arguments. The Basically the logging works pretty much the same way as it does uh, in graph node. So all of the logging that you have in your mapping files will also be uh, logged in matchstick. I'm just going to run that. And there we go. This is this is all of the different logging levels that we can print out to the console if we need to debug something. There is one more level which will actually cause a critical failure. So critical failure like this at our callback log.critical. Um, just 
like that. Let's run that. And this is when we, we have cases where we absolutely don't want to enter. Um, this goes if we have cases like that in our mapping files as well. We would want to see those issues right away. So there it is, the whole, the whole, um, the whole binary just failed uh, with the critical error and a little SOS emoji. Okay, so those are the helper functions that I wanted to show you. Um, one last thing I want to mention is the same way that you can have gravity.test.ts, you could also create a folder um, called gravity and you can have your test files in there. And if they're inside there, they don't even need to be called that way. So they can, so we can say um, basic tests, uh, basic.test.ts, right? Because you might need to have a bunch of test files for um, a given data source. So let's actually try that out. Beyond test. And there we go. The tests are running as normal. So that's, that's, that's everything I wanted to share with you in this episode. So um, see you in the next one.